Greetings, my name is Christopher Ricker. I'm a New York City Parks environmental educator here in the Greenbelt. While spending time outdoors, all of us need to be aware of the environmental impacts that we make just by taking part in everyday recreational and leisure activities. Whether it's hiking, fishing, spending time with friends and family in the outdoors, or picnicking, all of us have different impacts on our environment and the wildlife which call these areas home. During this video, we're gonna explore the seven principles of Leave No Trace in order for all of us as land users and passionate outdoor enthusiasts to be able to minimize and understand how we play different roles in our ever-changing biotic community. Leave No Trace provides research, education, and initiatives so every person who ventures outside can protect and enjoy our world responsibly. Before we dive into the seven principles of Leave No Trace, we're briefly gonna discuss the history and framework for how and why Leave No Trace was established. In order to do so, we have to start in the year 1964. Do any of you know at home what happened in 1964 that might have impacted our outdoor spaces? Well, in 1964, the Wilderness Act was established in the United States. All across, the, all across America, Americans were becoming aware that our natural resources were dwindling and in order to protect it, we needed serious protection and legislation throughout our country's outdoor spaces. With the establishment of the Wilderness Act and as we moved into the 1970s, Americans flocked to national parks. In some of your history classes, with the establishment of places like Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, and Yosemite, you might have seen black and white videos of lines and lines of RVs, individuals dabbing honey on their children for bears to lick off, or massive lodges where individuals were spending their summers in the 1960s and 70s. Literally during this time, outdoor professionals and rangers began talking about the idea of loving the outdoors to death. With each year and millions of new visitors, our parks were becoming overrun with garbage, wildlife was being habituated, and some of our water quality was beginning to deteriorate. With that, we began to move into the 1980s and in an organization known as Knowles, or the National Outdoor Leadership School, began taking young people into the outdoors and becoming aware of our environmental impacts. Early on in the 1980s, the director and founder of the National Outdoor Leadership School, Paul Petzl, began what was known as No Trace Camping. During that time, he was teaching outdoor leaders and outdoor visitors how to minimize their impact while camping, hiking, canyoneering, and climbing in our wildlands around North America. Moving forward to the year 1988, a publication known as Soft Paths was published. Knowles developed a 75 point curriculum looking at how to minimize your impacts in natural settings while enjoying the outdoors. If we move forward to 1994, Leave No Trace, sometimes known as LNT, became incorporated as its own individual nonprofit. And today, Leave No Trace Incorporated impacts over 15 million in Americans and a dozen countries through different educational programs, initiatives, and campaigns in order for all of us to be able to continue to enjoy the outdoors, protect wildlife, support natural resource management, and most importantly, spend time with friends and families and our communities in outdoor spaces. Now that we've covered the history and philosophy of Leave No Trace, I wanna talk about the seven principles of outdoor ethics that were developed by Leave No Trace in order for all of us to be able to enjoy and minimize our impact in outdoor spaces. 
The first principle of Leave No Trace is plan ahead and prepare. Our second principle is camp and travel on durable surfaces. Thirdly, we have dispose of waste properly. Fourthly, leave what you find. Fifth, minimize campfire impacts. Sixth, respect wildlife. And seventh, be considerate of other visitors. It's through these seven principles that all of us will be able to continue to enjoy and protect our parks, public lands, and wild spaces for generations to come. Enjoy. The first principle of Leave No Trace is to plan ahead and prepare. Before coming to any park, you should always prepare yourself. That way you maximize your outdoor experience. A great way to plan ahead for your trip is to look up the rules and regulations. You can always find rules and regulations online and don't assume that every park is going to have the same rules. You want to do this so you're not caught off guard. Now before coming to our park we have our trail signs like this and the, they also have our park rules. So you want to make sure you take a look at this before coming in that way you're not caught off guard. Now what I have in my hands is the map for the trails on the Greenbelt. You can find this map at sigreenbelt.org or you can find a physical copy like this one at our nature center. Now it's really important to look at a map before you come to the park. That way you get familiar with the terrain and you can use the map to assess your group strength. Before coming to any park, you always wanna check the weather forecast the day you're leaving. That way you can always dress appropriately for the weather. Now I always suggest going with layers. That way you can always take layers off and put it in your backpack, or you can always take layers from your backpack and put it on yourself in case of emergencies. Now, if the weather says it might not rain, I wouldn't trust that. Even though it's a beautiful day out, things can always change. That way, that, uh, that's why I always carry my rain jacket in my backpack, just in case of those extreme emergencies. Now, all the points on being prepared not only ensures your safety, but ensures the safety of everyone around you. And being prepared also limits the potential damage to our natural environment. Future generations deserve to come out to the park and enjoy our natural green environment. And that's why you should always plan ahead and be prepared. The second principle of Leave No Trace is to travel and camp on durable surfaces. In New York City parks, what we mean by durable surfaces are compacted earthen trails, stones, gravel, or even wood or bridges. So by walking and cycling on designated pathways, we're helping to protect fragile plant life that is on the side of the trails. If you see small flowers or young trees, be really careful not to step on them because they're so little that they may never bounce back from that damage. It brings up a really important point though, because all New York City Parks trails are for pedestrians only, unless they are paved pathways or multi-purpose trails that were explicitly made for that purpose. Something that's really important to remember when walking on trails is where you're walking on the trails. So if it's you by yourself or if it's you with a group of people, try to stay in the middle, because the more we walk off to the sides, the wider we're making our trails, okay? so. As we're walking in muddier areas, we might find something like this, a wooden structure that's been created to bring you higher than the mud. And this one is actually called a duck walk. This one's gonna help keep you and your feet nice and dry while you are traversing our trails. Something that's really important to remember is that when we're going off the trail and we're widening it, not only are we potentially damaging the plant and animal life on the side of the trail, we're also exposing ourselves to potential hazards, such as poison ivy, or ticks. When walking on trails, you will notice that there are different colored trailblazes on the trees and the stones along your path. And those are there to remind you of what trail you're on and help you figure out where that trail is going. And those are important indicators to keep you right where you're supposed to be because it's possible that you might be really close to neighboring private property that you'd want to stay away from. Also, Trailblazes will help you stay away from especially vulnerable areas called riparian zones. And those are the zones between the land and the stream or the river. And those are traditionally very rife with life of 
reptile, amphibian, and insects. And there'll be eggs and young there that you wanna keep very safe. So it's really important to stay on the trail and your trails will always be keeping you safe from those areas. A really great rule of thumb when we're talking about traveling on durable surfaces is to avoid areas where impacts are just beginning. So if you wanna take a moment to rest or you wanna have a picnic or something like that, it would be a really great idea to opt for a place that is a little more durable, like big stones or boulders, maybe some fallen trees or a stump, especially a bench or a picnic table would be a really great place to stop and have a snack. Unfortunately, overnight camping is prohibited in New York City parks, but if you are gonna come and stay for a little while, all we ask is that you keep your impacts as low as possible. And we can't blame you for wanting to have a nice night camping in a park. And so we actually have an option for you. The Urban Park Rangers of New York City actually run really great overnight camping programs throughout the city. And right here on Staten Island, the parks that you might be lucky enough to be able to camp in with the supervision and the guidance of the Rangers are Conference House Park and Blue Heron Park. So check out the New York City Parks website for those program opportunities in the future. Leave no trace, principle number three, dispose of your waste properly. So we all love to come out to our parks here and have a picnic or maybe even go camping. But when we do that, we need to take everything out of the park that we brought into the park and dispose of all of our waste properly. Hi guys. After a long day of hiking, it's really great that we have our public bathrooms here located throughout most city parks. Um, I knew before I came to this park that there was a restroom here because I looked it up online and I checked our map to see where the restrooms were located. So unlike our animals, um, where we are going to pick up their waste, we should be able to find a restroom. So please use our restrooms um, and leave no trace. So part of principle number three is to keep our waters free of our waste as well. So right here I'm by our beautiful pond and we want to try and keep that clean. What we noticed when we did come up here to film this is that somebody may have been here uh, feeding the animals some of their leftover bread. And we know this is a common thing that many people do. And you can see here, not only did they possibly feed the animals in the pond, but they left their waste behind. Um, and that's really a bad thing to do besides the waste. Um, it can make the animals that are out in our pond ill, which is part of principle six. So do not feed the animals, but it's also putting waste into our water. So those bread pieces are in our water. Um, and again, we wanna keep all of our waste out of the water. So food scraps, human waste, animal waste, other kinds of waste, just our litter. And another thing we came across was this fishing line. So we know people love to fish. And I don't know if you wanna follow me over here. You might be able to see we have a lure and a hook and a bobbin up in our tree here. And that's really bad for wildlife because birds can get caught in that now that it's stuck in the tree. And we understand that sometimes things like that happen, but let's be a little bit careful about what we're doing when we're fishing. Um, fishing line, um, again, is really harmful. So if you are a fisherman, please keep your waste out of our waterways. So while we shouldn't take things out of our parks, there are definitely things we want to remove from our parks, and that is litter. So when you bring something into the park, you should be bringing it out. So pack it in pack it out. That includes our food scraps, even apple cores and breadcrumbs, because those could be hot, harmful to wildlife. Um, if you're going for a hike or going for a picnic, bring something that you can carry your waste out in. I like to use a backpack. And in my backpack, I like to carry around with me a little garbage bag. All right, so not only can I take my waste out, but I can take waste out that other people have left behind. Leave no trace principle number four, leave it as you find it. Our parks and open spaces belong to all of us. By leaving behind all of the great things you're finding in the park, you can ensure a great experience for all the visitors that come after you.
Minimize your alterations to any landscape that you might be exploring. Even this log that I might be taking a look at is someone's home. I'm not gonna go too far into the woods if I wanna check it out. I'm gonna stay close by the trail. And after I'm done looking to see what I can find, I'm going to gently place it back in the same place that I found it. So. Part of our leave it as you find it principle includes our plant life. Our plant life here in our parks is imperative to the wildlife as you can see from this beautiful plant that I'm standing in front of right now. So please do not pick the flowers, don't damage the trees, and especially no carving into our beautiful trees that we have here in the park. You can stop and smell the flowers without taking them home. Although we may not understand the impact of removing something from our green spaces, even things as simple as rocks can have an impact. In New York City parks, it is illegal to remove anything from our green spaces, including feathers, antlers, historical artifacts, and especially wildlife. Let's keep wildlife wild and our pets our pets. The fifth principle of Leave No Trace is to minimize campfire impacts. And when we spend time outdoors, it is totally understandable that we would want to have a campfire. In New York City parks, it is prohibited, however, to have open or ground fires. But don't worry, because in designated barbecue areas throughout New York City parks, you are allowed to have small cooking fires. So on Staten Island, those parks where you'll find these areas are right here in Willowbrook Park. You'll find them in Wolf's Pond Park, up on the hill in Clove Lakes Park, and even at Midland Beach. But always remember that campfires and even small cooking fires can have really big lasting impacts on an environment. Think about any place that you've heard that has had a wildfire. It is really devastating to communities and ecosystems. So we do ask that you be responsible even when in our barbecue areas and keep it safe. When building your cooking fire, you can use sticks that you found around the barbecue area. Make sure they're not too thick and they're actually thin enough that you can break them by hand. You can also use charcoal, but propane is strictly prohibited. Also, don't forget that the barbecue grill is not a garbage can. It is only for making fire. So if you have garbage, make sure that you dispose of it in the proper place, like the garbage cans that are available. One of the absolute most important things for you to remember when you are tending a fire at one of the designated barbecue areas is to never leave it unattended. The fire should always be in the cautious care of a responsible adult 18 years of age or older. And when you're just about ready to go home, what you need to do is be really careful and make sure that you let all of the coal and the wood burn completely down to ash. And then you can even cover it with water and make sure that it's completely out. And then when you're all done, remember to leave no trace and dispose of all of your waste properly in the right receptacle. Fire is magnificent and it is powerful and amazing and we should all be able to enjoy it responsibly in our parks and this is the best way that we can all do that together. Principle number six of Leave No Trace is respect wildlife. While exploring the outdoors, encountering wildlife can be a unique and often rewarding experience. But in order to continue to maintain a healthy ecosystem for our wildlife neighbors here in our parks and on other public lands, the following action items will assist you in making sure that we're continuously maintaining our biotic community. Oh, hello there. Binoculars are a great way to observe wildlife from a distance. Another great way to observe wildlife from a distance is a rule of thumb which means if you put your thumb out, if you're able to cover the entire animal with your thumb, you're the correct distance in order to maintain a positive and safe space for both you and wildlife. On top of creating a great distance between you and wildlife to observe these wonderful animals, another way you can minimize impact and respect wildlife is by minimizing your trash and waste impact. So making sure that you're throwing trash, as Karen Ruse mentioned in our other principle, in the receptacles and never feed wildlife. One big example of wildlife being fed here on Staten Island is roadside food. That's places where people are leaving large piles of vegetables, 
which not only habituates things like deer and other wildlife, it also moves them closer and closer to vehicles, which then can end in a tragic tale of events between humans and wildlife. Our pets, just like us, enjoy spending time outdoors. But in order to respect wildlife, we need to make sure that our pets are also leaving no trace while spending time in our parks. Here in the Greenbelt and other New York City parks, it is by law that all dogs need to be on a leash and controlled while spending time in the park. And so whenever you're out enjoying wildlife, the trees and our natural wonders, make sure that your pets are under control or please leave them at home. Another way to respect wildlife is to avoid visiting parks and natural locations during sensitive periods of time. These periods of time can include mating, rearing of young, nesting, or even during the winter. By being aware and planning ahead and preparing for your visit to the outdoors, you can make sure that you too minimize unnecessary impact on wildlife during sensitive times of the year. Again, we want each and every person in this country and beyond to be able to enjoy the outdoors while also recognizing the footprint that we have on our ecological communities that also share this world with us. The seventh principle of Leave No Trace is to be considerate of other visitors. People come to the park all the time to recreate in their own specific way. Some people come to view nature in its natural habitat. So that's why it's important that we don't disturb these guests with excessive noise, uncontrolled pets, or damage, the, uh, damage to the natural area. So that's why the seventh principle of Leave No Trace is to be considerate of other visitors. So there are a few ways that we can limit our noise to not disturb other visitors of the park. First, we can keep our noise levels to a minimum with our voices and when, when you see park goers coming on the trail. Another way, if we use our phones, you wanna keep the ringers on a minimum or on vibrate. That way, no one else hears it besides you. Another way, if you're listening to music, you can listen with headphones and listen as loud as you want. So, as you're walking on the trail, it's very common to come across other park goers that are hiking as well. When you come across these other park goers, you want to make sure that you give them enough space, that way both you can pass. So, one of you is going to step off the trail onto a durable surface, such as on a patch of dirt, or on a log or a rock. That way you don't step on any of the vegetation or plants and let someone walk by. This ensures that there's no damage to the environment and that people can see nature in its best form. That way, that's why the seventh principle of Leave No Trace is to be considerate of other visitors. Leave No Trace has a rich and vibrant history. From its humble beginnings in our national parks to its global initiatives that we can see around the world today, each and every day Leave No Trace Outdoor Ethics is dedicated to teaching everybody the importance of minimizing our impacts on the natural world. Throughout this video, you've gotten an introduction to the seven principles of Leave No Trace. So hopefully you can begin your fun and non-intrusive journey in our natural world. Again, if you're interested in learning more about Leave No Trace and its Center for Outdoor Ethics, please visit leavenotrace.org. We all enjoy spending time in nature, but how we behave when we are in our outdoor spaces can impact our environment. By following Leave No Trace principles, we can minimize that impact and keep our environment healthy, not only for ourselves, but for the wildlife that share our spaces. We all rely on clean water, clean air, and soil to live happy and healthy lives. It is never too early to learn the values of Leave No Trace. I learned these values when I was a Boy Scout at about 11 years old. The best way to spread our message is through our children. That way, the values of Leave No Trace can spread to future generations. We have adapted the seven principles of Leave No Trace Outdoor Ethics for the shared use of public lands within the New York City park system, because that's where we are. And that's where some of the greatest progresses and impacts can really be made. 
Just like our natural environment is strongest and most beautiful thanks to its diversity, so too is our community of visitors. So let's always remember that different cultures experience nature and public spaces in very unique ways and commit together to making these spaces inclusive to everyone, regardless of race, religion, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, socioeconomic status, or even level of experience in the outdoors. And once we know better, we can all make the choice to do better together.